Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how you go about installing a tower rail. This will also help you if you're looking to install one of those new tall column radiators, which are becoming very fashionable these days. If you've watched any of my other videos, then you'll see that I go into great detail about what I come across when I'm installing. So hopefully if you are going to install a tower rail for yourself, this video will cover everything yet that you'll need to know. Now this video is not a short video because I cannot cover everything that you need to know in just 10 minutes. So I hopefully you'll stick around to the end because there's lots of really useful information all the way through the video. And then hopefully you'll be able to install your own tower rail with no problems at all. I'll also give you some information of what you should look for before you go buy yourself a tower rail so you don't end up with a tower rail which doesn't really do the job. I'll also go in detail into the radiator valves so it doesn't matter whether you want to buy a lock shield and a wheel head or a thermostatic one. Uh, there's lots of information and also it's important that you make them up correctly when you put them on the radiator so I cover all that in this video. I'll show you some different fixings if you have plasterboard walls. Now this customer has already removed the radiator because he wanted to decorate behind it. So I've got a nice flat canvas to put the new tower rail on. He's also drained the system down. So I'm not gonna cover how to remove the radiator or drain the system down. But of course, if you wanna know how to do that, I made lots of videos and you can find all those down in the description below. I will also show you how you go by adding some inhibitor to your tower rail. So it then goes into the whole system nice and easily. And of course I did adjust the pipework and I'll be flushing that out. And I left the pipework to the end of the video. So if you wanna watch that, you can see how I go about changing the pipework. If after watching my video, you do decide to install a tower for yourself, then let me know how you get on in the comments below. And don't forget, check out my website where I've categorized all my videos and I've left links to all the products and parts that I recommend. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification, the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video, or in the cards above. So here we go then, here's a tower rail and I've already taken it out of the box. Before you go fitting your tower rail, make sure that it's not damaged because the last thing you do is finish fitting it and find out it's got a nasty chip in the paintwork or that there's a dent in the chrome. After doing that, you just want to put it in the position where you're going to install it. Now this customer prepared the area for me. He'd already taken the old radiator off. He'd removed the brackets from the wall, plastered them up and then painted the wall. So it's all ready to fit the new tower rail, making my job a lot easier. And if you want to know how to remove a radiator, then watch my video on how to remove a radiator for decorating. Now normally I would like to adjust the pipes and make them so they look nice and neat by taking the floorboards up. But you can see in this case they have tiles down on the floor which is also probably laid on top of plywood. So taking the floor up isn't an option. The customer knows that and they are more than happy to have the pipework showing with bends in it. Now just to make my job a little bit harder, when you look at these pipes you can see that this pipe is hard up against the skirting board. And when I go to the pipe on the other side, there's a gap here, which I can get my finger behind. So that's gonna make it really interesting when it comes to soldering on a new piece of pipe. Now I've already spoken to the customer and they have asked me to put the tower rail center in between the two pipes. Now the next thing to consider is which way up do you want your tower rail? Now, if it's a tower rail like this, most of these does not matter which way up they go. It's really just a case of how it looks and where you want the rungs but it is important on some tower rails, so do check your instructions. Make sure that you do put the tower rail the right way up because if you have a tower rail with a flow stop in it, if you get it the wrong way up, then your tower rail just won't get hot. These are normally rails where the valves come in from the side and not on the bottom of the tower rail like this one. Now the customer has decided they want to have the tower rail the other way up. Now it's also worth pointing out that this tower rail is fairly sparse with the rails. The customer bought this and they said they got it for a really good price. Well, I can see why, because there's not many rails on the tower rail. So it is really worth checking out what you're gonna get when you buy a tower rail. Now I always recommend going for as large a tower rail as you possibly can if you're gonna take out a radiator, because once you put your towels on your radiator, you're gonna insulate the radiator and not so much heat's gonna come out of it. And if you want your bathroom nice and warm as well, you definitely want a nice powerful tower rail that's gonna heat up your bathroom and your towels. The couple of rails I just show you have got lots of rails on, so they will put out lots of heat. 
tire rails and column radiators in general don't put anywhere near as much heat out as a radiator. So you can check this by looking at the BTUs or the kilowatt output of your radiator you have now in comparison to the tile rail you're thinking of fitting. Now my next job is to decide where to put the brackets. Now if you put the brackets at the top here then it's going to reduce the space to put your towel in. Now you can put them lower down which I usually do, I usually put them there. And with this style of tile rail, it doesn't really matter where you put them. But obviously with this radiator, because there's not many rails on it, you don't get that much choice where you can put them. And I'm going to put the lower brackets right down here at the bottom. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to protect the floor because you don't want to get that brick dust on your carpet or into your tiles, your grout. So put down your dust sheet and protect that floor. Now, like I said, I'm going to put the brackets one here and one over here. Now this tile rail is also curved, so it does make it a little bit trickier when we come to fit the brackets, but I'll show you how we go about doing that now. So here's a little pack of bits which came with the tile radiator, and we got our two blanking plugs here, one there and one there, and this has got the bleed screw on it where you let the air out. And then we got a packet of screws right here with some wall plugs and some washers and four tiny little screws. And then we had the four wall clamps. Now this is one of them here and then this slides apart. So you've got several pieces to this. That bit there screws onto the wall. And then we've got this little screw hole in the bottom here. And that's where those little screws go in. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now I'm gonna just separate all these out. So I've got them all taken apart. So I'm gonna take these one out, take that one off and take that one. And also that one there. So they're now laid out. Then we have the other piece here. Well, we have the little cap on the top here. So we're just going to prise this little cap off. You might need a screwdriver to do that, but be careful you don't damage the chrome. So then we've got one little cap. I'm going to do all four caps. So I'm just going to pull them all off. That came off a bit easier. And this one here. And then finally the last one. Just a note, if you've got your bits anywhere near your basin or your bath, then make sure you close that plug hole. You don't want to drop something in there and it vanishes down the plug hole. Trust me, that's the last thing you want to be doing. Now I'm going to remove this screw out of this clamp and I'll show you how these clamps work. Because like I said, they can be a bit tricky and hard to work out how they actually fit onto the radiator. Now here's our radiator clamp and they have these special little grooves in to fit onto the bars on the radiator. Quite often these clamps are universal, so they could also be used on a flat radiator, but our radiator is curved, so it's important that we use the right side to go onto the radiator. And you can see every side is different, so it's really important that we get them in the right position. So you can see when I put the clamp on the tower rail, you'll see that at this position there is a gap. But if I turn it around like that, the clamp fits snugly in between the two bars. So I know that's the position which it goes in. We'll need to do exactly the same with the other side of the clamp also. Work out which position it fits in. Now I need to make sure that the bracket is square to the wall. So I put the radiator up against the wall and I put the bracket on and I'm making sure that it's square against the wall. You can see if I get it wrong, it's on a funny angle and that's no good. So if I turn it around 180 degrees, then that's square to the wall. And that's how you want it. And then you've got to do exactly the same with the front bit. You can see that fits square there. But if I turn it around like that, you can then see it's on a funny angle and of course that's not correct. So I'm going to turn it back round again. Now with the bracket in the correct position, I can fit the screw and the front cap and then do it up with my screwdriver like that. And then I can then move it around and get it in the right position before I get it tight. Now I always like to put the brackets as close to the edge as possible and then I just nip it up. If you do these screws too tight, then it distorts the front piece and then the cap doesn't fit on properly. And there you can see I've left about five millimeters on the edge there. Now I just do exactly the same with the bracket on the other side. I put the screw in, do the screw up, move it to the edge and just nip it up. Once I've done the two top brackets, I turn the radiator over and fit the other bracket at the bottom and then the other one on the other side. And that's it. So that's all four brackets now fitted. Whilst the radiators are upside down, I'm going to fit the two radiator valves. Now here's one of the valves and these came from Wix and this is the lock shield. So I'm just going to take the cap off and see how this lock shield works. There's a little screw in there so you can balance the tower rail with the rest of your system. Now I'm going to undo this union nut here and take a look at what's inside here. And when we have a look inside there, there's actually a little rubber o-ring in there. So you don't need to put anything on that joint. So there's no need for joining compound. And also they've got this ring here, which seals the threads going into the towel rail. 
and this is the wheel head valve i must say these wix valves are very diy friendly because you don't need any ptfe tape or any kind of joining compound to fit them onto the radiator or the pipework so here's a selection of radiator valves so i've got a western thermostatic one here i've got a drayton thermostatic valve here and then i've got a wheel head and a lock shield on the end here now all these radiator valves are what we call straight radiator valves so they are good for tower rails when they want the pipes to go straight down into the floor just one thing you need to be careful of is sometimes these radiator valves they aren't straight like this one here you can see the connections are offset so if you're replacing a radiator valve or a tower rail then this could be a bit annoying if you've got this valve and you find it doesn't line up with your pipes so just be aware of that whereas this valve here you can see it is straight the nut at the top and the bottom are in line with each other now if you're going to fit a thermostatic radiator valve to your tower rail then it's important to note they have an arrow on which indicates the direction of the flow of the central heating water to explain this a little clearer here's a diagram now what happens is the water flows in on one side of the radiator and it goes around the radiator or tower rail and it flows out the other side now it doesn't matter which side you put your thermostat on but it does matter if which way that arrow is pointing so make sure you get it pointing in the direction that the water is flowing the best way to find out which is your flow side of your radiator or towel rail is to turn your central heating on and just feel which side gets hot first so which pipe gets hot first will be the flow side so when you come to fit your thermostat on make sure if it's on the flow side the arrow is pointing in that direction and if it's on the return side it's pointing in the other direction the only other way to do it is to just take pot luck fit it all together turn your heating on and if you got it right brilliant if you got it wrong you need to take it all apart and just turn the valve over or you could try and see if you can get a valve like this one so this western radiator valve you can see it's got two arrows on this means it can go on the flow or the return side and it doesn't matter which way around the valve goes because the water can flow either way through the valve and of course wheel head and lock shield valves it doesn't matter which way around they go or what side they go on now i thought i'd just show you this radiator valve extension this replaces the tail which comes with your radiator valve this just moves the valve further away from the radiator if you're trying to reach a pipe that's maybe just a little too short just a quick point about these little caps which come with your thermostats these are what are called decorators caps and what they are for when you're doing your decorating and you want to make sure that the thermostat is fully shut so there's no chance of the thermostat opening and letting out water so when you put the cap on and screw it up it pushes in the pin and closes the valve now how to make these valves ready for installing now it's important to know that these threads here they aren't straight they're what are called taper thread so it's fatter at this end and it's thinner at this end so when you screw it into your towel rail it gets tighter and tighter as the thread goes in now i'm going to show you two ways you can prepare this for fitting one with ptfe tape and one with my preferred method which is loctite 55. when you put your ptfe tape on it's important to make sure you put it on in the right direction so it's got to go in the opposite direction to which the thread does up so that when you screw it up it doesn't undo itself so imagine screwing the thread in and as you screw it in it winds the ptfe tape on and that's the direction that you want to put it on so you can see i'm wrapping this around and remember you're not trying to do the bottom of the threads you need to do the top where it's at this fattest now i'm going to put 20 wires onto this now you may think that's a really lot of ptfe tape but trust me you do need a lot of ptfe tape some people will say more some people will say less but i always put 20 and there we go and just snap it off and then twist it around and make it nice and smooth and there we go that's now ready to be screwed in now i'm going to show you my preferred method which is loctite 55 and when i'm screwing the tail in it always goes nice and tight so i know it's making that good seal and i'm not going to get any leaks so we do exactly the same again we wrap it around the thread at the top where the thread is at its fattest again wrap the cord around the thread in the opposite direction to which the thread will do up with this we want to just crisscross it and keep turning the thread around and crisscross the cord over itself so you get this kind of crisscross fashion and i'm going to do a few more just around it just to finish it off there so that's about 10 winds and that should be enough with of this loctite 55 and then just do that snap it off smooth the end of the cord into the thread and that's it now that one is ready to be screwed into the towel rail i can guarantee if you made it like this and you screw it in nice and tight it will be 100 percent leak free 
Now I'm going to show you how you prepare your compression fitting for fitting onto your towel rail and pipe work. Now I've seen a video where it tells you to put the PTFE tape onto the thread like this. So you, they're telling you to wrap it around here to make the seal. That is not what you do at all. This would do absolutely nothing. All it's going to do is clog the thread up. And I see it a lot when I go into people's homes. And I can tell straight away, here's a DIY man who's got no idea what he's doing. So you can totally ignore that big DIY store who's got a video up telling you to do exactly that because it is completely wrong. What seals the joint is the olive and where the olive touches the valve. That is the part which does all the sealing. There's no other part is literally just that bit there. All the threads do is hold it together and squash the olive into the seating on the valve and then you get that good seal and it won't leak. I use two methods for sealing compression fittings. One is PTFE tape and the other is some joining compound. Now you can use any type of joining compound for sealing your compression fittings. I use this jet lube because it's suitable for gas and for drinking water. But as you won't be working on gas, you can use any type of joining compound. Then all I need to do is get a little bit of my finger and then wipe it around the inside edge of the radiator valve, just like that. So you just wipe it around. So you've got a nice covering on that inside edge. That's where the olive pushes up against the seating. You don't need to go crazy and get loads of it. And so it all goes down inside the valve is literally is just around the edge. Again, you don't need to put any of this onto the threads. And then when you push it together like that, I just do the nut up. That's going to push the olive against the seating. And then when I undo it, we'll have a look and see what it looks like. We go undo the nut, pull off the tail. And there you can see, look, we've got a nice covering all the way over the very touching surface of the olive. And it also goes down over the tail. And you can see there's nothing's gone down inside the radiator valve. So that would make a really good joint. And then you would do exactly the same on the other end of the radiator valve, the part that joins onto the copper pipe. So you put the nut and the olive onto the pipe, smear some joining compound around the valve seat in, and there you go, it's ready to connect onto your pipe. Now, if you want to use PTFE tape instead of joining compound, you could do that also with the olive, and it's just a case of wrapping the PTFE tape around the olive. Remember, it's that front surface that touches the valve, which does all the sealing, so make sure you get a nice, smooth covering around that front edge. And you don't need to do too many winds, maybe three or four would be enough. Now that's done, I'll just pop the valve on, do up the nut. There's a little bit of PTFE tape showing there, but I could just trim that off because I don't like any PTFE tape or joining compound showing. And then take it off and we'll see again what it looks like. And you can see the PTFE tape has tightened down onto the olive, making a nice clean seal. Now, if you have one of these radiator valves with a flange on it, but it doesn't have a rubber washer on it, what we need to do is just put some joining compound on this inside surface here like this. So we give it a nice little covering like that. And there you go, that's a nice covering all the way around. And then if I just screw the tail onto the valve like that, and when I undo it, you can see the tail is staying stuck in the valve. And if I pull the tail off the valve, you can see that there is a really nice covering all the way around, which would have made a really good seal. And of course, you would just make the other end up exactly the same as the other radiator valve fittings. I wanted to just quickly add, it doesn't matter what sort of valve you put on. So it doesn't matter if it's straight or angled. You can see that's an angled radiator valve there. And you can see the Loctite 55 there, a little bit of string hanging out. And on the other side here, we've got the TRV. You might think that's upside down, but it still works absolutely fine. And I've also included an extension in there just to drop that valve down to make all the pipe work look nice and neat. Now I'm just going to remove these two plastic caps from the bottom of the towel rail. Then I'm going to screw the radiator valves into the towel rail. Now I've never used these Wix valves before, so I'm not sure how well I trust them. So I'm just going to put a bit of LSX silicon sealant around this joint here, just to be doubly sure it's not going to leak. You probably don't need to do this, but I'm just being extra cautious. If you do use sealants or compounds, make sure nothing has gone up inside the valve. Then I can just screw it into the radiator. Now there's two ways we can screw the tail into the towel rail. Now I must say that these Wix radiator valves haven't got the standard size Allen key inside them, which most radiators have. So I'm using a different tool here to do up the tail into the towel rail. If you don't have a tool to do this, then you can try my second method. 
The second method which I used on this tail rail is to tighten up the valve onto the tail and make that really, really tight. So I see I made that really tight. I can then turn the valve, which will screw the tail into the tail rail. Now I'm going to screw this valve in nice and tight because I want to make sure that seal on the threads is right down inside the tail rail. Then I can just wipe off the bit of excess sealant and there we go. Now I just need to loosen off the valve like that and now I can move to marking it out. Now this customer wants the tail rail to be center in between the two pipes. So I just measure the distance between the two pipes and then I can just divide that by two and that would be the center line. I like to just double check my measurements. So I just turn the tape measure around and check that both sides are measuring the same to the center. And there we go. I then use my spirit level, make a line and then transfer the line up and make a very light pencil mark down the wall where the brackets are likely to be. Now I need to find the height of my brackets. Now this can be tricky, especially if you're on your own. So I'm going to try putting my toolbox on the floor and then resting the tower rail on top. And that actually works out to be the perfect height. If I put my pencil across from the radiator valve, it lines up just above the old valve, which is kind of perfect. And now there's my pencil line on the wall and there's my two brackets. Now there's several different ways of getting the center line for the radiator. Now I'm just going to measure in between the two brackets and of course divide that by two. Now we also need to make sure that the tower rail is level. So I'll put the level on the side there or I could put it on the rails like this and then check this level and then move the rail to being level. Then again, I like to check that my measurement is correct. So I measure to one side and I measure to the other side also. And then that should be the same on both sides. I then put a pencil mark on the bottom of the bracket and on the side of the bracket and the same on the other one, or I could draw all the way around. It's a little bit tricky to do that. So I've just made a little line at top and bottom. And now you can see my line on the wall there, top and bottom. And then I just join those up to create a cross. I'm now going to drill the holes in the wall for the two top brackets. And here's our wall plug. And then this is an internal wall. So if you are drilling the holes in the internal walls, make sure that you do not go right through the wall into the other room because these wall plugs can be a little longer than on normal radiators. If you're a bit unsure how deep to go, then you can always put a bit of tape on your drill bit. You take the wall plug, put it against the drill and then put a little bit of tape just a little bit further in than the wall plug. Then I just drill the two holes into the wall and then I put the wall plugs in. And then I just tap it into the wall and make it flush with the wall. Now it's really important that they go flush with the wall. If it's not flush and some of these little wall plugs have a like a little collar on, Get a Stanley knife blade and just carefully trim it off so it's flush with the wall. See that wall plug didn't quite go all the way in, had a tiny bit sticking out. So I'm just trimming it off with a Stanley knife blade. And there we go. So that's now cut off. So it's now flush with the wall. Now I'm just going to use a bit of bathroom cleaner just to clean off any marks I've left on the wall. So I quickly wanted to show you a different way of fixing your brackets to the wall. Now, if you've got plasterboard walls, which a lot of you will, you'll need a different type of fastening. Now, this is the type of fastening which I use when I'm fixing a tail rail or radiator onto a plasterboard wall. They come in different lengths. So if you've got different thicknesses of plasterboard, you can get a longer one for that thicker plasterboard. But if you've got a plasterboard wall, then ideally you want to be screwing your brackets onto a piece of wood or batten that's in the wall. Just show you this in action and how you fix it into your wall. So I've got a special little tool here and all I do is I loosen off the screw, then put it into the tool, just pull the trigger so it nips it up, keeps it tight. I would then push it into the plasterboard wall like that. In it goes and I'll squeeze the trigger down and that squashes up the fitting and it clamps onto the plasterboard. Like I said, this does make a very good fix in. So I hope that helps if you've got plasterboard walls. Now, before I fit the brackets, I always screw the little screws into these holes because they can be really tricky and hard to get in once you've got your tower rail on the wall. So I'm going to screw this into here. Now, do be careful if you do this, that you don't end up stabbing yourself in the hand. You can see if I slipped off here, I could easily just stab myself. So do be really careful. Maybe do it on the floor instead of trying to hold it in front of a camera like I am. There we go. So I screw that screw right into it uh, so it goes all the way in flush like that. So that's what it ends up like. 
and then I just unscrew it and back it out but I leave the screw in the hole. That makes it a million times easier when you come to screw it up once you've got your towel rail on the wall. Now make sure that you put the washer onto the screw and the flat side of the washer is inwards and the rounded side is on the outside. Then just screw it into the wall plug. Now you will have noticed that the hole inside the bracket is slotted. Now when I finish screwing it in, I always make sure that the bracket is slid right down to the bottom. So there's less chance of it slipping down when you've got your towel rail on. So the screw is now at the top of the slot and the bracket can't move any further down. Now I just repeat the process, screw in the little screw, then back it out again, get our screw and washer, and now screw the bracket onto the wall. This time I'm gonna use my electric drill just to speed things up. And then I get my level and I place it on top of the two brackets, making sure that it is level. If it's not, I'll just adjust one of the brackets to make it level like that. Then nip up both of the screws and make them good and tight and check that it is then level again which of course this is. Then I can get my towel rail and just slide it onto the two brackets. And then I'm just gonna check it with my level to make sure it is vertical. I can then move on to the lower brackets where I just repeat the process again. So I make my two pencil marks on both the brackets like that, then remove the towel rail, then make the little cross on both sides, get my drill, drill both the holes like that, put my two wall plugs in, tap them in if necessary, screw in my two screws, and then back them out again, screw the brackets to the wall, but this time I'm gonna put the brackets to the center. You can see I'm gonna slide it up and down. I'm gonna find the center position and then just nip up the screw there. Now I'm not gonna do these bottom brackets really tight because I might need to move them when I come to fit the towel rail. So I'm gonna hang the towel rail on the wall now. I'm hanging it on the two top brackets first. And then when I come to the two bottom brackets, I'm gonna check those and I can see that they do need a slight wiggle, just need to move them slightly. And there we go. And we just push that on. Then I remove it one final time, nip at the two screws and then refit the tire rail. And I'll make sure that I push it all the way back. Now, like I said, I like to push it all the way back and you can see that bracket is all the way back there. And when I look at this bracket here, this needs a little push. So just push that one there in like that. And when I look at these two here, that one is okay. And this one here, this one is not pushing back. That's because it's taken up the unevenness of the wall. And that's the way I like to use these brackets. You could slide the towel rail out a bit so it's a bit further away from the wall, but I do feel that will be adding extra force onto the brackets and they are only plastic. Now the tower is in its position, I'm gonna screw these four screws into the brackets. Now these can be quite tight and quite tricky, which is why I said to screw it in first of all. So that hopefully when you come to screw them in, you can screw them in easily and you don't end up slipping off and scratching your chrome. I can then just nip the screw up on the front and move on to the next screw. So this is the third screw I'm doing up and then finally the fourth screw. And of course, don't forget to nip up the screws on the front as well. Then I can just put on the four caps, covering up the screws. They just push on and just clip into place. And there we go. That's the towel rail now fitted to the wall. Now I need to make up the pipework. Now I'm not gonna do that in detail because this video is all about fitting the towel rail and the valves. But I have done that and I've left it at the end of the video if you want to see how I go about doing that. Now back to the Wix radiator valve. This is the fitting that seals the pipework. You can see it consists of a split brass collar which grips the pipework and then a rubber seal on the front of that collar. And I think this is quite a clever design because again, you don't need any PTFE tape or any other types of sealant. So now my pipework is all soldered up. I can then just push the nut with the collar onto the pipework. And then it's just a case of putting the valve onto the pipework and then doing up the nut. If you are using any other type of valve, then you should use some joining compound or PTFE tape to ensure you get a good seal against the pipework, the olive and the valve. Now I want to flush this little bit of pipe work out because I've done some soldering and there'll be a bit of flux in there and I want to wash that out. So I'm going to do the valve up on this angle so I can then pressurize the system and then let some hot water run out and clean out any flux which might be left in the pipe work. 
If you're going to do this, make sure both your valves are shut like that. Now finish the pipework on the other side and then I do up the valve, doing exactly the same, put it on an angle so it's pointing out into the room. I'm then going to do up the screw in the valve to ensure that it is closed so that when I pressurize it, I don't get water coming out straight away. I'm now going to top up the system again by opening these two valves on this valiant boiler. If you bunged up your loft tank, now's the time to take those bungs out. And now I'm going to go and flush that bit of pipework out. I am going to run the heating because that will make the water nice and hot and it'll also help to get rid of any flux that's left in the pipework. Now using my water vacuum, I'm now going to open that valve and you can see I'm going to let some water come out and that's going to wash out any flux that may be left in the pipework. And I'm feeling that bit of pipe work there and that's nice and hot now. So I'm going to open up one last time just to make sure it is nice and clean. Then I'm going to move on to the second valve and do exactly the same thing. Of course with this one I'm going to use my screwdriver. I'm going to undo the screw and there you go you can see the water pouring out there. And I'm just waiting, feeling my pipe because that's going to get hot. And there we go that's a good bit of water flushed out there now. And that would have cleaned that pipe work up nicely. By the way, when I did this, I then turned the heating off again because as I'm doing this, I'm going to be dropping the pressure on the system and I didn't want the boiler running when it had no pressure in it. So there we go. I've now nearly dropped all the pressure on the system because obviously now I'm also going to need to turn the valves back around again and I didn't want any pressure in the system because I'm going to need to loosen the nuts up and I don't want water accidentally spraying out or maybe the valves bursting off because I think these Wix valves once you loosen the nuts which holds it on the pipework I think you'll be able to pull the valve easily off and of course if there's any pressure in this system it might just burst off and you're getting water gushing everywhere and of course you don't want that so now I've got no more water coming out so I know I've dropped the pressure back down to zero I can now just loosen the nut to rotate the valve around like that do the nut up onto the valve like that then when you come to do this valve up tight make sure that you support it don't just hold the valve with your hand use two spanners support the valve and also another note is you may want to use a cloth or put some tape on your valve so you don't damage the chrome now my spanners are nice and smooth so i know i'm not going to damage these valves but if you at all got anything rough then you want to protect your valves and there we go i now done up both nuts on that valve and I'm going to move on to the second one and then do exactly the same again. So I'm going to loosen that off, turn it round, do up the nut, support it, tighten it up, then tighten the other nut up. And whilst the towel rail is empty, I'm going to add this inhibitor into the towel rail. And that's a really easy way of adding the inhibitor into your system. And what I'm going to do it by adding an old radiator valve tail into the top of the radiator. And I've got a little adapter which I've made which screws onto the pot. And then I can just lift the pot up and let the inhibitor run into the towel rail. All you would need to do is to get a funnel, put it in the top of the towel rail and just pour the inhibitor in that way. Once that's done, I then just need to add the two blanking plugs into the top of the radiator. And that's one of the reasons why I leave these to last. So I just got to screw those in. And now when you do these up, you want to do these up really nice and tight. Not just nipped up, you want to do them nice and tight so they don't leak. Because I've seen these leak lots of times where they've not been done up really tight. And there we go, that's all done. Now all I need to do is to just go and top up the boiler and let the water into the radiator. Now I'm topping this fenlit boiler up to 1.5 bar, as you can see there. After I finish bleeding the radiator, I will need to come back and top it up again. Now I'm just going to open up that lock shield valve and I'll hear some water running into the towel rail. And there we go. And then I can just open up the other side as well. And again, I hear some water going in. Now it's just a case of bleeding out the air from the top of the radiator. So I just put my radiator key in the top there. Just get a tissue there to catch any water that might come out. Open it up. Listen for the hissing. Now I might need to go and top up the boiler a second time when I'm doing this. But then you can saw some water just spray out then. And that's it. Close it again. Nip it up. Don't do it crazy tight. And just dry up any drips you might have. I then just need to screw on the lock shield cap. Again, don't do this really tight. Just put it on and just do that up hand tight. One last check on the boiler to make sure the pressure's good. If it isn't, just top it up a bit to the correct pressure, which is between 1 and 1.5 bar. The towel rail is now nice and hot. And now I can hand this over to the customer. I must say the pipework isn't the neatest. I would have liked to have done it a little bit different, but like I said, we didn't really have a choice with this. Once the customer's painted those pipes, it'll hopefully blend in a bit and it won't stand out. So there it is, all finished and ready for some towels. 
So now if you're interested, you can watch how I went about doing a pipe work for this towel rail. So the first thing I need to do is to remove the old thermostat from the pipe work, like that. Then I'm going to use a screwdriver and wedge it in behind the pipe work just to pull it away from the skirting board. Now I need to get that old brass olive off. Now these old thermostats have a funny shaped olive. Quite often I have to use a hacksaw to cut these off, but in this instance I can use a pair of pliers, give it a wiggle and just pull it off. Now I can see there's a little bit water in the pipework, so I just dip my screwdriver in just to remove that water. Now it's just a case of using some special emery and rubbing down the pipework to make it nice and clean so that the solder and flux will make a good joint. Once I'm happy that the pipework is clean enough, I'm then going to apply some flux, put on the fitting and apply some flux to the other piece of pipe and then put the two together. I then put my heat mat in position and then solder the fitting up. You can see I just apply the solder there and I'm going to use my mirror and look to see the solder has run through, which it has. Oh, and there goes the smoke alarm. I'm then just going to let it cool a bit and then clean off that bit of pipework. I'm then going to use a long street elbow, put that in the valve, and then I'm going to use another elbow, put that on the other side, and that looks about right to join these pipes up. I'll then put a piece of pipe into the radiator valve and then I can draw a line on the other bit of pipe to get the correct height. Then I use my pipe slice and cut that off. I can then put an elbow onto there, put a bit of pipe on it and then mark the distance to the other elbow. Cut it to length and then put it all back together and make sure it fits. Then flux it all up, clean up any pipes need to be cleaned and put it all back together and then solder it all up. Just a note when I'm soldering, I do have the radiator valve open and the blanking plugs aren't on the top of the radiator so any expanding air can escape and not blow the solder out of the joints. After I finish soldering, I just check all my joints, wait for it to cool and then clean off any dirty marks on the wall and on the pipework. And there we go, the right hand pipework is all finished. Now on the left hand pipework, I decided to use junior hacksaw to cut the valve off. But when I did that, I found that the pipe was uh, a bit crushed, so I had to slice that off anyway. And then give it a clean, use my mirror to check around the back, get rid of any water in the pipe, flux it up, put the fitting on, give it a twist, and then solder it up. Quick check with the mirror, clean it off, put the other bit of pipe on, mark the height, slice off the pipe, give it a clean, then repeat the process I carried out on the other side, and then flux it all up, and then we're ready for soldering. You'll see when we're soldering, I'm not pointing the torch directly at the heat mat because these heat mats do stop the heat, but they will still transfer heat through and I don't want to burn the wall. So always point your blowtorch away from the heat mat if you can and anything else that's likely to be damaged from heat. And then give it a good clean and that's both bits of pipework complete. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video, then you can click on the link just here. And if you found my video helpful in any way, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And like I said, that will help others to find your video. And if you enjoyed the video, then you can click on subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.